Yeah. Women Matters, the second day of the new year, 2023. And I think we need to do some updates here. Some of us we haven't seen for a long time. Some of us almost always, you know, but let's see. Oh, even Beatrice is coming. Good, good, good. We will be a big round. And yeah, I would suggest that everybody takes some time and tells everybody how they are doing, how they were doing, how they are doing now, what the pro uh, projects are and so on. And then we will see what topic will come out of it. Hello, Beatrice too. I give over Monia. <laughs> you are on the left, on the upper left. That's your turn. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah. We had an easy rutsch <laughs> um, to 23. We watched the Fledermaus, uh, and the first time that it was the, the role of Frosch was played by a woman. Do you, do you ever, does everybody know where, what Monia is talking about? I do hope so. All right. No. Uh, well, you just have to check it up. It's uh, a customary opera that's played always at New Year's Eve. And uh, usually there is a very drunk, uh, uh, what is he? He's a jail warden. And he just, and now this year, they, this role was played by a woman. But of course, she was not drunk. She was very articulate and very, yeah, very, oh, she was terrible. <laughs> um, no, it's, it's not her playing, but the, the way they just uh, put her texts and it was just embarrassing. Anyway, so we had lots of fireworks. And you really can't say that Austrians are very poor and they can't afford their heat or their, their electricity or their gas because they, the fireworks took more than half an hour and they were just fantastic. So it's, I've never seen that elaborate fireworks. Anyway, so the reality and what the media tell us does not quite conform. Um, my husband and I are adapting to being slower and uh, not as, 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 as uncomplicated as we were, if we ever have been uncomplicated, I don't know. Anyway, um, we play cards together every day now. Uh, it's just to short-term memory, which is fun. We've never done that before, and now we've been doing it for a couple of weeks. It's called a uh, Level 8 Master, in case you want to have a look at it. So you just have, it's a, a lot of luck, and also you have to, to uh, com combine your cards in a certain way. And we're doing our puzzles. And I got a new calendar for everyday brain jogging, uh, which is fun. And I noticed that my brain still works. <laughs> <laughs> which is sort of, uh, yeah, a good thing. Yeah, that's about all. But we have no plans for 23. Uh, except for staying healthy, <laughs> and I will, I will hopefully lose some more weight because now I'm on a plateau due to the many cookies that are still around all the time. And uh, yeah, so this is, this, and I'm, I'm noting down my dreams tonight. Uh, last night I had a very sexy dream. Uh, and I thought it was over that. <laughs> okay, I pass on to Christine, which I haven't heard a long time. Christine King. Just, just so grateful to be here. And the way my schedule has been, there have just been commitments on Mondays. 
And um, all of a sudden today is a free day. It's a holiday here because New Year's fell on a Sunday. So this day is a day of quiet. Um, catching up, my gosh, I can't even remember how long it's been since I've been with you. I'm guessing three months longer, perhaps. I think August or something. August, okay. Mm -hmm. no. So I, I, there's, there's nothing really, but, and there was really nothing to report except that I've had some health issues. And um, a lot of people would love this, but I don't. I've, my body has just lost 20 pounds mm. over a couple of months. And um, we don't know why that is. So I'm seeing a specialist tomorrow. And I guess we'll find out why that's happening. Um, some things have changed. My voice has changed somehow. It's scratchier. So my body is trying to figure out, where are we? What are you doing here? Um, I don't really have too much of an appetite for food. Um, it's called force feed. <laughs> and I just make myself eat things. But um, don't particularly enjoy it. So a lot of my attention has been working with alternative um, practitioners who have tried to give me supplements and other things to help my body be stronger. And that's taken up a lot of energy and time. And so um, right now, the coolest thing is that my son is coming in about two weeks with my grandson from Seattle. Yahoo, I haven't seen my seven-year-old grandson has never actually been to this. I've always gone to them in Vancouver, but they've moved to Seattle now. And um, they're coming here to play with me for about four days. So I'm planning for that and buying things that he will enjoy, spoiling him like crazy. And um, that's where my attention is at the moment. Give me great joy. So happy to see all of you. Yes. So I give it to Christine West. Good morning, everybody. I'm in Carlsbad, California. And uh, looking forward to 2023. I'm sure I will repeat myself during the course of the year. But um, at the end of December, my office lease uh, ends and I don't plan to renew it because I would have to renew for multiple years, I'm sure. So um, yeah, I'm looking forward this year to uh, gearing down and uh, shifting down and um, not quite sure how I'm gonna go about that, but I'm still looking forward to it. Looking forward to having more free time. I had ni nice two weeks off over the holidays and I slept better. Even though I don't feel like I'm stressed, um, it's amazing that when you don't have to do anything the next morning, you don't even have to get up and make your lunch for work. Uh, <laughs> It uh, it helps me sleep better. So that was really a really nice uh, change over the holiday. And had a lovely holiday, quiet with the kids. Um, it was good. Had a, had a nice time. Just mostly cooking and, you know, watching a little bit of uh, films. I went to a few films um, in the theaters, which was new, a uh, new experience since uh, the pandemic. And um, that was fun. Uh, yeah, I've had, did a little bit of hosting over the holidays for friends and COVID seems to be less and less of an issue. Um, but people are still testing. Some people wear masks, not very many. I mean, most people go without masks now and, uh, um, sometimes testing though before big events. So yeah, it's still with us. And, um, yeah, I've managed to stay healthy, knock on wood. Uh, 
yeah, that was, that's pretty much it. I haven't set any New Year's resolutions because um, <laughs> I know that they'll be uh, discarded uh, in quick order. So I haven't set any resolutions for this year. But uh, Henley, I will pass off to you. Hi, you, Henley. Did you post you. me? Ah, <laughs> sorry, I, I lost a little bit of signal there. Hello, everyone. I'm in Cape Town in South Africa. And I'm in that in-between space where you've been for a while in one space and suddenly in a completely different environment. So it's really just wonderful to just be, actually, for a while. And we had a lovely road trip. Um, we slept over on a farm way in the Bundus and it was just wonderful to I, I said I should have stayed there for a few days at least before I came to Cape Town it was halfway between Johannesburg and Cape Town but it was completely cut off from the rest of the world it was just beautiful and quiet and really loved that and yes still now sensing into what you know to this environment it's completely different but it's most beautiful and yesterday we had um, friends family from my one friend here and Monia, you were speaking about opera. So we met a 24 year opera singer and she sang for us. It was just amazing. It was just amazing. Really, really amazing. I still get the shivers when I just think about it. And as for 2023, it's also just being in the flow. These exciting things happened for us. At the end of last year, we had the ability to secure some translations of our workshops in Japanese, Spanish, German, and Turkish. So that will all happen in 23 before July. So we are quite excited about that. And then we will do the first Japanese workshops in Japan in July. And in, in Germany, it will most probably be in May, March, April, around there. So in Switzerland, but we in German. So we're quite excited about all of that happen and some other things too, but I won't bore you with that now. So I'm just saying it's it's just allowing it to happen and not stress about it. And, and as it appears, go with it. So that's where I am. I will pass on to be. Hello. Um, I'm in San Diego. My mother is also in San Diego. She's coming home from um going to daily mass so the owl's iphone is my mother just so you don't think there's some <laughs> mysterious person lurking um i think she'll she'll come on video when she gets in the house um let's see what to <laughs> i haven't seen most of you in a while i don't know but i've also seen some of you so i don't know what to update on um last year was a lot of traveling and a lot of every time I joined this meeting, I think I was in a different place. Um, I had left New York um, because I so, some of my jobs um, were stopped being able to pay me, and some things shifted, and I was kind of scrambling in survival mode. And I decided that maybe it was better to take a break, regroup, and figure out what the next chapter is going to be. Um, I do plan to go back to New York at some point. I mean, to live again. I've been going back for projects. Um, it's actually been really nice. As soon as I left, I got creative projects in New York that I probably couldn't have done when I was living there because they don't, you know, they don't pay enough to sustain paying rent. And I was very busy just trying to make money to pay rent. So it was really nice to be able to go to New York and just do creative projects with people that I like to work with. <clears throat> including my first professional, well, I, I had danced, done solo projects before, but at the first time that I had auditioned for a dance project and got a part and got to perform, and that was very exciting. So um, I'm living in Portland now, Portland, Oregon, um, with my partner, Galen. Um, right now we're visiting San Diego because both our families are down here for the holidays, but we're going to head up at the end of this week back up to Portland um, via via car. It's 20 hours of driving, um, which is kind of fun, but also exhausting. I mean, not all at once. We try to break it up. Um, 
I have some friends up north that I like to stop by and visit on the way. Um, what else? And last night to bring in, well, not to bring in the new year, but well, I guess so. Yesterday is the first day of the year. Um, let me back up. I spent the last, but I spent two weeks um, recently at my grandmother's property. Uh, she died in 2019, but this was the first time we had access. Um, I spent two weeks there sorting through all of the papers and objects and finding family photos and recipes and music and all this history. I mean, it was all mixed together and amidst trash and junk and other things. So it was a big job. Um, but one of the things I found was my grandmother's uh, rose cake. It's a it's a bunt cake in the shape of a rose, um, but the flavor is actually lime. It's a lime cake with a lime glaze, but it looks like a rose. And she had typed up the recipe. There's a bunch of typos. It has cream cheese in it, but at one point it says the dream cheese instead of cream cheese. And this is funny typos in the recipe. Anyway, um, my my partner's sister Emily found some news knows someone who had a rose pan. So we borrowed the rose pan and we made the cake yesterday. And it felt really nice to honor my grandmother and to taste that cake again. And I've been missing her a lot this holiday because because I was going through all her things. It felt a lot more real that she was gone this year, even though it's already been three years. Um, anyway, so I have a, I think I'll find a picture of the rose cake I can show you. But um, so that was that was the delight yesterday. Um, we had a nice dinner and had the rose cake and everybody loved it. And here's my mother. Um, so maybe I'll pass to you, Mama. You're muted, Ma. You're lucky I was muted. I was coughing. Um, Happy New Year, everyone. Um, great to see you again. And um, there it is, the beautiful rose cake. Um, yes, I can confirm it was every bit as delicious as when my mother made it. Um, it also has special significance because it was the last um, birthday of Beatrice's father. Um, my mother made it for, for my husband's birthday and it was just, uh, just, um, six months before he died. So, and we never ate it after that. So this was the first cake since his death and my mother's death. And, um, yeah, so it was, um, kind of bittersweet. Well, it was very sweet, <laughs> but it was, the experience was bittersweet. Um, so it's, um, I wish I'd heard all the, the, the check-ins. I'll have to catch up with the recording. Um, glad to see you all again in the new year. And, um, I'm just trying to hold myself together for a concert I have in two weeks. Um, it's someone at the institution told me, um, I'd forgotten, but she said that this is the fourth try to give this concert. Um, <laughs> I'd forgotten that. Um, I had to keep postponing it for various reasons during the pandemic, and then I had COVID and one thing after another. So, um, so I wish she hadn't told me that it put a lot of pressure on me. But um, so hopefully this time it'll it'll come come off okay. Um, it's by far the most difficult concert I've ever given. Uh, I mean, I haven't given the concert yet, but the program. Um, it's and I I've been suffering with really extreme arthritis, so. It's um, it's a very it's an especially big challenge because every note hurts. So it's like it's kind of like walking on trying to tap dance on in bare feet on a bed of nails. Ooh, that's a great image. Okay, yeah. yeah. So, um, <laughs> but it's the music's so great. It's kind of, I, anyway. I'm I'm still looking forward to it in spite of the pain. Um, I just it if the arthritis continues like this, so it may be my last concert. So, but I'll go out with a bang. So um, anyway, that's, I think enough for me. I, I don't know who's shared so far. I'll just pass it to whoever is still needs to share. Um, Gertrude Beatrice says. <laughs> Hello, Gertrude. Yeah, hi, and Heidi. 
You want to go first, Heidi? Yeah, I, f I completely forgot about you um, in the week of Christmas <laughs> because I had a friendly invasion. <laughs> My whole family, so one after the other came and we were seven, seven people and two babies at Christmas. So we had the babies, their families, another grandmother <laughs> whom we first met at that occasion. And, and so every, every room was taken in our house. Um, yeah, that was very nice. And when they left, <laughs> we slept for five hours uh, right, right away. So it, yeah. So that week before Christmas was, was really, really busy till Christmas. And then we had a rather quiet week now and quiet um, turnover the year. Yeah. I don't have, I don't have like goals for 2020. Can I ask you something? I would like to know where are you now in the house you, oh. you sold or where did no, you? No, 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 no. The house uh, we I lived there as a child, so the house we sold was uh, that's that's gone, oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> and we still live in our home okay. near uh, north of Frankfurt in in Germany. Oh, I didn't get yeah. that right, so okay. yeah. Mm -hmm. So we live here for twenty four years, and we are looking for another house once we sold the other one, but we don't have to leave here. So it's, it's easy. Yeah, F for me, it's also like, I don't have to get anywhere. It's, it's kind of just more being than, <laughs> than doing. And, um, and still there's, a lot to do and uh, yeah we finished the, the WeFlow training uh, with the end of the year so we still have some calls but but the training is over and a new to come for next we uh, year so for new WeFlow stewards and um, yeah coaching and etc will go on but it there is no urge to get anywhere. And for me, like when I hear that some people say uh, the war might be over in the middle of the year, I really, really hope so. So it's, it's like, this is still in the background always, this war in Ukraine and knowing Ukrainian people that, that really makes it more tangible what they are going through. So yeah, I think that's that's <laughs> what yeah, and, and the kids when they 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 were here, it was really, really nice. And uh, we talked afterwards and she said we have to do that over and over because No reason named. She got frozen, I guess, with a reason. Yeah, it's a very weak signal. Oh, no. You have to do it again and again because of what? Because then you froze. Oh, <laughs> uh, because they want, want us in their lives and they want to have the grand their children to know the grandparents. And yeah, so... Mm -hmm. that's very nice yeah. that they want it because I was not so keen <laughs> with my parents so okay. yeah it's not much to say it's just relaxing in the inside I would say mm -hmm. yeah so I say something too and over to you yeah thank you because 
what I'm hearing and what I can adhere to is nowhere to go, no, no hurry, no, no rush, and still a lot of things to do. That's what I feel too. Several people here have said that, no? So, yeah, I, I'm here now. At, uh, yesterday, the other day, 31st, there, we were seven people here and we had a nice dinner and I went to bed at 11 o'clock. At 12 o'clock, there came the whole uh, noise and I noticed that the dogs were right beside me because they, they are afraid of the of uh, these noises. I'm living, you know, quite well. It's just going on. Life is going on, going on, you see. Today we had to go around because the, the pipe of the of one of the furnaces was broken. And so I passed half of the day running around and trying to fix things and find things. And what happens, happens. And I was very aware that we would meet and so I wouldn't be able to go around in the afternoon. So I didn't go to Pilates because I wanted to be here. So you now life is going on as it goes. And uh, for 23, I certainly want to have peace in the world, but I want even more, you know? I want that we get out of the craziness. We get come back to rationality and to to gesunder uh, Menschenverstand, what is that? Uh, to, 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 to Common sense. Common sense, yeah, <laughs> exactly. And that we don't allow any anymore to be pushed into, into panic and things like that. And then, because it's really making something with everybody, you know, when you are in panic, you are just get into stress. And I noticed that too. And I, want to refuse myself to, to, to allow anything to push me into panic again. And I hope I can do that. So, I mean, I was never really in panic, but you know, this underlying anxiety, which is um, going along. Anyway, uh, I hope this year to, to really create some, oh, um, cooperativa or something legal for my house. And there seem some people to be interested to help me with that. And so we will see how this uh, will go. I'm, I'm I also there, I lose the urgency despite I'm getting older and older, but I lose a little bit the fear that I wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to manage all that. And so it's, it's good, altogether good. I'm, I'm fine. <laughs> Do you still have people living with you? At the moment, I have two, a couple of from Brazil who want, will stay here for a year. They are already here for three months, uh, three weeks, and the German woman and two guests, two German guests too. But they will go away in a few days. So, yeah, I'm not completely alone. And with Austra uh, Australians, no Brazilians, I, I really, it's a nice feeling. They are, they are sweet and and. Allegro, you know, so that's really nice for them. Yeah, but I still, I mean, I do my life as always and not always. I'm, I really actually don't want to be always with other people. <laughs> so I need my, my space for myself. So, yeah. So far to me. So what, what shall we talk about this? This feeling of what you were talking about, what I was talking about of not needing to do and still doing or something like that. And does it, does it change the way we are doing things when we are getting out of pressure of expectations? I have to do, 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 do. something like that. You must, you must uh, unmute yourself, Christine. A word came to me as I was listening to all of us and I, had, I heard the sweetness of life. Mm sweetness it's a tasting of that and that is the being not going ahead of ourselves not going backwards but just the sweetness of whatever moments we have in this day-to-day -day life sweetness. That, that's just a thought that came to me yeah but, that's it's in some way also combined now what makes the, uh, the sweetness in our lives when are we able to touch it? That would also be a good 
Yes. Perfect. Yeah, thank you. Is it okay with you? Yeah, I would like to, to share also, and that comes together, I think, um, I might have a new client and I did one of our new practices in WeFlow, um, which is called a Silver Diamond. And this is, it was some noise in her ear and things like that. So we focus, it's focusing on what's so, like be there with all your awareness, not changing anything, just being that. And then it changed. <laughs> so, um, so it went away. And, and it's not a treatment, uh, nothing like that. It's more like really being with what's so and be with what's emerging out of this. And, and um, I think what you said, sweetness of life, for me, it's also being where I am or being with what's so. <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, that that comes together for me. So so I get <laughs> the sweetness when it's when it's uh, arising, or even in in the things that don't work, and I'm just being with that. So that that came up to me. How, Gertrude, how sweet is it when it doesn't work? I think the sweetness comes with not judging. Yeah. Because our, our holidays my uh, daughter was tested uh, positive on the 24th, of course. Mm. So we celebrated with our second daughter, uh, but then it turned out that she was, she is already immune. She doesn't really infect anybody. Her CT uh, is very, very high, but it was, was two days and so, but, uh, yeah, it, it, it didn't upset me or, or uh, to change everything. It was just as it was. And yeah, it was very nice. And we enjoyed being together. And, but I'm very old. This is what I know, except, so for me, it's sort of natural, but I'm amazed that you are all already at this stage. So my comp. Chapeau, <laughs> compliments to you. It took me much longer to get here. It's 14 years apart. <laughs> That's two seconds. Yeah. I, I feel like we've had to make so many adjustments and adapt so much in the past three years. It's like when things come up, for me, when things come up unexpectedly, somebody you know, can't make something because they're ill or whatever. It just feels like, you know, okay, <laughs> I'm, I've kind of gotten used to expecting the unexpected, um, not really counting on things too much. It does kind of help. Uh, you don't get too attached or not too invested in a particular outcome. Um, because you never know. And I feel like, I don't know, I'm sure we've all become more expert at that over the past few years when we don't really know what's, what's next. And Heidi, regarding your common sense, it, it's kind of like what, what Monia said, you know, the, the news always wants to make us feel on edge because they want us to pay attention to the news. <laughs> they want us to come back. And it's just kind of toxic to some extent, because they tend to blow, everything's a big deal, even the weather. I mean, if you listen to weather reports, you know, the rain that's coming is going to be like, you know, Noah's flood or something. It's, it's always uh, ramped up to keep you um, trying to go back to them for more information. So I don't know, that common sense, I think it's there, but the media tries to talk us out of it, I think.
And I'm, yeah, maybe. yeah, I'm so I just had dogs run out and barking. Um, what for me, is, I'm curious about is how younger people experience it. Like my daughter and you, Beatrice, and the likes, because you're similar age. She's a little bit older than you, but I, yesterday when we had the people here, three of them were, and you know, my daughter's actually much younger. And it was really just beautiful to listen to them and to be present with whatever they are experiencing, also without saying it's good or bad, right or wrong, whatever. Because when we're just being present to something, to others, we hear more. We actually hear more and we, we experience more of allowing others to have their experiences. So it's not about labeling their, any experience, whether it's ours or others, when we're just present to it, we have that ability then to, to allow them to have their experience, to try, not try to fix them or tell them this is wrong or there's a bad better way of doing that and the likes. So, I, But I'm really curious today as with what's going on around us, how the younger people are experiencing the beingness part and where they then step out into the world from in the to the doing part. So I'm really curious about that. I feel like I was the spokesperson for all young people, <laughs> which I'm not sure that I have an accurate representation, <laughs> but I guess I'm the one in the room. I don't know. I mean, that's a struggle for me, the presence thing, personally. I don't know that I think different people have different strategies. Um, I'm... I'm always thinking ahead and thinking behind and caught up in nostalgia in the past and anxiety about the future and inundated by information on my cell phone or my computer or so it's hard it's hard to be present um however when I have been or am present it is very powerful and it's a very stark contrast like like tangibly and physically like viscerally different um so I think it's something it's something that I've been trying to have more of in my life in general in addition to not always being so busy and fast and you know doing too many things um yeah I don't know I think that's my answer for the moment there was one day I'm just remembering one day in New York where um, Galen was visiting and it was a Saturday or something. And we decided to just get out of the house. We had no plan and we left our phones behind deliberately. And I think they we thought we would just go and get breakfast or something. We ended up staying out for about seven hours, just wandering. We got breakfast, we took a walk, We you know, notice the architecture. We we had no map or time or text messages or <laughs> anything to distract us. We just had to be present wherever we were. And we wandered around Brooklyn for seven hours. And it was one of my favorite days. So yeah, maybe maybe an intention for this year is to have a few more of those days. <laughs> Of, of completely unplugging um you know because it was it was nice because also it was a Saturday and I didn't we didn't have we we had something in the evening but it was late in the evening so we knew that once it got dark we could make our way back and we'd still be okay with time um you know it's it's I think it's harder to do that when you feel like you're supposed to be in touch with somebody or you know everyone expects you to be on your reachable at all times um so it's the world has shifted it it's not very conducive to being present that's for sure so you have to fight back and choose to do it yourself so I guess I had more to say to that, that about that than I thought so those are my thoughts well I I've as you, every, all of you know, I've been living on Zoom for the last three years or whenever the pandemic started. Um, 
interacting with people all over the world. And um, again and again and again and again, I hear people lamenting that it's they're stressed out from the media, especially the media, um, and the obligation to um, connect with people, you know, with the the you know with their cell phones. Like as soon as they get a text, they have to respond. There's you can't wait around. As soon as you get an email, you have to respond. That the, everything there's this demand to be totally on all the time, and. Um, and I went to a retreat a couple of weeks ago on Zoom um, with my one of my favorite teachers, who's she's in the Boston area, and um, and the whole retreat, she kept telling people, you know, I know it's going to be really hard, but you know, don't turn on your televisions. It's you know, the news can wait, whatever it is. Don't turn on your computers. Don't do this. And people were really battling. And I thought, I thought. Um, because I, I gave up the media. I mean, not not Zoom. That's I love Zoom. Um, <laughs> I gave up. Um, I gave up following the news um, when I was living in Japan in in two thousand. And I haven't. I, you know, I I get. I learn enough about the news. If I go to Daily Mass, the priest always prays for whatever is urgent in in the world. Um, people, you know, people talk about it and. My mother always berated me for being ignorant. She was very fierce because she lived with the news. I mean, she had CNN, which is the, uh, do you all of you know what that is? Um, yeah, it's, um, she had that on her television 24 hours a day and the television was always on. So there's always this noise plus the phone ringing. And I, I think maybe in reaction to that, I, I went into, um, I thought I'm just gonna live in real time. And, and if someone mentions something in the news and we want to have a conversation, that's fine. But otherwise I'm going to live where I am in the moment with whatever I'm doing, whatever my, you know, if I'm with friends or if I'm practicing the violin or I'm reading the book or going for a walk. And, um, but it really, it pained me to see how, how these, I mean, in that particular situation, how much these people were really suffering. Like it, the addiction had become so intense that they actually felt that the world would come to an end, like what you were saying, Christine, about the rain, you know, the weather message. These people who were that, who would, it, they just had, weren't even, didn't even realize how they were addicted to the media and how every minute, like if an hour went by and they didn't know exactly what was happening in the Ukraine, something terrible was, so it was going to be worse. It almost was like a superstition. I, I don't know, I can't describe it, but anyway, I, it just made me realize how, how we really do have to be mindful about our own boundaries and make choices. And um, I mean, I've got enough disasters going on in my head 24 seven that um, I, don't, I don't need the media. I've got, I've got internal <laughs> wars and conflicts and problems. Um, so I think the, yeah, that day, I didn't know you didn't, you never told me that Beatrice, but I think that's that's really profound that, um, I mean, just this morning I had, I was worried about a million things on my way to mass. And then I saw a raven and I was so happy to see that raven. I and then I just kind of blurted out, um, "I love birds." And my friend who was driving um, sa said, um, "Oh yes, I just read an article this morning in the New York Times that said that ravens are are smarter even than whales and dolphins, and they're the most intelligent animals." And he went on and on. And I thought, what a wonderful world we live in. Like like. And and I thought, I'm so glad that like, instead of sharing something that he read, because he reads the New York Times every day, I thought it's great. Like to your news for the day is, is how smart ravens are, you know, it was, <laughs> anyway, I'm talking too much, but I, I, I think it's, that's a really like as a new year's resolution, like to make choices, like say, if I want to look at a bird for half an hour, that's what I'm going to do. And, and, and like Hanali was saying, I heard it on the phone as I was coming up the hill just to be in a different space and um, a different world and just enjoy the beauty. And I think our culture is, is, is so like driven to achieve and work and do this and do that. And, and if we don't consciously take a step back and say, wait, it's my life, I can choose, then we can get overwhelmed and there can be a deluge of, of obligations and responsibilities. Yeah, Gertrude has the, um, the grandchildren issue <laughs> um but but i think it is it's a matter of choice and agency 
Um, anyway, I, I've done my sermon for the day. Thank you. Happy New Year. <laughs> Sorry, I went on so long. Wasn't it you, Gertrude, you wanted to talk? I saw you unmuted. That was ages ago. <laughs> I don't know anymore. <laughs> yeah, what, what I wanted. Yeah, yeah, now I get it. Um, Munya said, but you're, I'm the old one or so. I'm not so sure if it's a mat only a matter of age. I mean, with age, it might come. Uh, but it's also awareness. It's, yeah, to choose and, and to be aware. Um, you know, my, my problem at the beginning of the year with somebody. And um, I think this person couldn't be with what's so. Just to life should be a certain way and if it wasn't <laughs> then you get upset and and then you blame other people and then whatever uh so i think i went through a very hard school at the beginning so the first yeah um or last year it was just the the end and then i was with that company where, where everything changed all the time like people getting sick and uh COVID and so uh meetings getting cancelled and maybe two days later maybe next week and I was like okay good then let's do it this way so and I finished the whole thing and I think that other person would have gone crazy <laughs> <laughs> couldn't couldn't have just just be be with this and 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 just survive this and and i think i got that also with my my grandchildren even if they cried i was like okay <laughs> if you have to cry right now and they were not hungry and the diapers were changed and things like that then be it then here I am and I listen and 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 I think that that's yeah it's it's not I know people of age that don't have it yeah I wrote down the sentence to take a step back not to be overwhelmed and um, this is exactly what I did today because I got a very unexpected and pleasant offer to meet someone under cer special circumstances. And I looked at it and I sort of tried to get the feel of it. And then I said, no, it would be too much for me. It would overwhelm me. And I would have never thought that I say that a year, half a year ago or a year ago, because I'm always efficient and I can do everything. And just to admit that I might, it might be too much, even if it's only emotionally, even <laughs> only. Um, yeah. So I really, uh, I feel a lot relieved because I was able to refuse something that might have turned out very pleasant. And, and, uh, and I said, well, let's postpone it. Maybe in one week or two weeks, maybe I feel up to it, but now I don't feel up to it. And that's something I have never done before in my life, so. So Victoria sees the sweetness in life by a raven. What else brings sweetness of life? For me, it's sometimes the doggies, you know, when I see their eyes and they're coming and I'm just melting away. So 
Yeah, you, you remind me of my daughter's dog. Uh, before we moved with a removal, you know, to move down to Cape Town, I was with her for a month or so to help with the packing and everything and all the arrangements. And I got very close. I'm close to her dog, but because I was with them in the same house, it was really, we, we had this different bond. And she said to me the other day, you have never, you, you've never had that type of uh, relationship with any of your own dogs, you know, when you still had your own dogs. Now I said to her, but I was too busy raising kids and working and stuff. But now she said, it's like, I'm the grandmother of the, of the, like a child, but I am, I'm his grandmother. But that's so sweet. And Heidi, you just remind me of that. It's so sweet in the mornings, he would come out of her bedroom to mine to come lie between my legs and then he would cuddle up. And he would make these very interesting noises of really enjoying the sweetness of life. And it's something that if you asked me 10 years ago, I was too busy, 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 you know, but now it's like just the most amazing thing to be present to that and to be part of that with an animal on that level, that my grandchildren are far away in New Zealand. So I don't have them around me all the time. And then to have that type of connection with an animal it's just beautiful. That is true sweetness of life. Interesting. Um, I just have a, one short thought I have about this sweetness because um, our group have family and friends nearby and I live at the end of a dirt road by myself. And most of the holidays I've been by myself. But what I've discovered with the sweetness has been very carefully choosing what I want to read. And I've chosen books like this. I don't know if you're familiar with Ann Patchett, but she's just an amazing author um, and being an extraordinary being. And she's, she's at the core, more, most kindest person I've ever known. And I feel like I know her because I've, you know, she's written autobiographical stuff, essays, in addition to her, and she's won lots of awards. So I carefully chose books, and I actually went into a bookstore nearby because I couldn't find this answer through Amazon. I want books that are kind. <laughs> Can you help me find books that are about kindness? And they helped me, and one worked really well, and one maybe didn't, but it's, it's like the sweetness of choosing what senses come to us, what information comes to us. And contrary to our culture, I never listen to the news, ever. And it might sound like I don't care. It's not that case. I just, there's something about me that takes it in too much. And I'd rather hear it from friends or others, or maybe even read it. But to hear it, it just, it's like, sharp knives that are the opposite of kindness. So I do care about what's happening in the world, but the sweetness is to let it come in in a way that I can handle it. Kind of an unusual combination, isn't it? <laughs> Controlling things to make them sweet, but to, yeah, it's, um, it's um, nice to be able to say that to this group. A lot of people might not know what in the hell is she talking about? But now you know. <laughs> Can you show up the book again? Of course. It's um, These Precious Days by Ann Patchett. And if you like to see an author in a YouTube, she's in many, many YouTubes. So you can get a feeling for the kind of person she is. Um, yeah. One of my favorite books of hers is called Truth and Beauty. It's a, about a, a memoir about a very close friend. An amazing piece of work. I would like Thank to be on audio. This is 
it's one of my granddaughters when she's happy. <laughs> So, <laughs> this, yeah, that that was our noise throughout the day. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. So, this is sweet. Of first, when I when I was there when they were newborns, just have them on my belly and my chest and they sleep for one slept for i don't know two and a half hours and always like a grin <laughs> on her face and and the energy is so so amazing you're just sitting there and have that baby on on the lap it's enough yeah so this is my sweetness this year <laughs> And that double. <laughs> yeah. I'm wondering, Beatrice, you and me, we are the only ones who have no children. So how how is it landing with you? The mother instinct, let's say, or the joy of a mother. Wait, what's what's the question? If you can understand this, what that mothers feel sweetness when a baby is squeezing, uh, not it's not squeezing. How is the the word? No, it's not screaming. It was not fear. It was joy. But out of the noises of a baby, can you relate to it? I can relate to it because I've done a lot of childcare oh, okay. and babysitting, and spend a lot of time with children and like to spend a lot of time with children. So, so you can really... um, less, less the infant more, you know, more, a little bit older, but um, yeah, but I, but also I think something I probably can't relate to is, or how do I put this? I think, I think sometimes because I'm not the parent and I can extract myself or I, I don't know. I think I, I think I feel maybe a little bit more tired or walk not more tired, but 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 more um a desire to disengage mm. if the child is too much. And I think parents feel this too, but I think there's something else underneath of of also feeling magnetism or or something, you know, connected to the child, even no matter what's going on, even if you want to run away. <laughs> I don't know. I'm making that up. Parents, you can uh, <laughs> chime in. <laughs> yeah, I can relate to what you are saying. Sometimes I find children quite nice, but then when it's too, too much, it's too much. And as it is not yours, you can more easily go away, you know. So <laughs> mothers, you 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 have the the offer to chime in and what Beatrice said. And it was quite a while back when mine was little, so <laughs> I can't remember much. But I remember with my granddaughter, when my granddaughter, my second granddaughter was born premature, very premature. Um, I had to look after the young, the older one. And I, wa I was staying with him for six weeks. And I was just, when I returned to South Africa, I was... I was finished. <laughs> <laughs> I was finished because she was so busy and uh, to adapt to her ways, or like everything is around her then because her mom was in hospital for a very long time with the other one. It was just, I knew why I had my children young. <laughs> so I didn't have, because as at my age, it was very difficult to, to, um, to hold my own energy while running around like a maniac after this little one was very, very busy. And to, um, it was very sweet, but it, there, was a, there was a sense of, I've done my part for humanity in that way. <laughs> now, now, it's, now it's done. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, we slept after they were gone right away, but 
uh, I didn't say I have to have that every uh, 24 hours a day. It's, but when we were talking about sweetness, there are so moments when this happens and I wouldn't like to have that in my ear all day long, but uh, yeah, there is something beyond, beyond the obvious that that's what I mean. That would also be my question. How come that with your own baby, the mothers just do and do and do and do and seem to be a, a, a never ending energy, having never ending energy and doing uh, everything which is needed? Is there an explanation? <laughs> Got a response to that. Um, I think I was 33 when my son was born. And I was so glad that we, he was born in Heidelberg but I quickly moved to a, a role, that, a position I had in a university in Japan. And I was so glad because it was easy to have a full-time nanny. So I didn't enjoy the day-to-day -day responsibilities, but I managed it because I had this help, live-in help those first few years. So. Some of us don't go to it so naturally. <laughs> I was more interested in where I could be creative in the world and then come home and play with my kid. So yeah, I'm not very, in other words, I'm breaking the stereotype of this magnificent process of um, motherhood. It's wasn't the way I saw it. But I still doesn't mean I love less. I just did it differently. If that makes any sense. Loved him, but um, needed help. Well, grandmotherhood is a lot easier than motherhood. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> oh yeah, I would. I would subscribe <laughs> that. <laughs> My grandson just met last at New Year's, uh, his first love of 10 years ago. And he, <laughs> it's very funny because he then talks to me app, on WhatsApp, but he only writes one sentence and then the next sentence and, and it goes bling, 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 bling. And my husband said, what's going on there? Uh, why doesn't it play, bling on my head? Well, it's because uh, that's grandmother talk. So uh, <laughs> it's so, yeah, it's very sweet the way he appreciates that I listen to him. And yeah, so being a grandmother is very nice. And uh, there is one saying, it's a shame that you can't have your grandchildren before you have your children. So, <laughs> yeah. Okay, this is my checkout. I don't think I can be more sophisticated than this. <laughs> Thank you all. Yeah, good. go ahead and let's do the checkout. On sweetness. I, I need to get going, so I'm going to check out with you all. Good to see you. Look forward to seeing you in a couple of weeks too. Um, I don't know if anybody is on integral life, but I'm going to do the Nomali Pereira is having a course over the next four months and reading uh, Ken Wilber's book, Sex, Religion, and Ecology. So she's doing, it's going to be a weekly meeting uh, starts on Thursday. So I don't know if anybody's interested in that, but I think we'll be good. So I plan on doing it's that. It's his best book. It's his, yeah. That's, that's his what best they book. say. Yeah. 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 And uh, in particular, the footnotes, 200 pages of footnotes. Yeah. Wow. Just terrific. Terrific. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to that. It'll get me more integrally focused for uh, okay. <laughs> uh, IEC. Okay. Good to see Which you all. See you in a couple of weeks. About? Which book are you talking Eros about? Eros Cosmos Logos. Sex, Ecology, and uh, Sex, child and... Sex, Religion, and Ecology? Sex, Something, yeah, and it's Ecology. In, 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 English, in, in German, it's Eros Cosmos Logos. So it's not sex, it's Eros. <laughs> okay. See you guys.
Happy New Year. Thanks. Well, I think it, the book wouldn't sell in the U.S. if it weren't called sex. I think Eros, people are too unsophisticated here to know what Eros is. <laughs> you need a really racy title. Will you go on, Victoria, with a checkout? Oh, oh, well, I feel like I've talked way more than I should have. My only comment on the, um, yeah, on the grandmother thing is um, I'm, I hope Beatrice will get cracking pretty soon. Um, <laughs> No, I'm teasing. Um, I have to say, though, about the what you were asking about, just this is my checkout, that I think that the, for me, the greatest blessing of being a mother was that um, no matter how stormy life's circumstances were and no matter how crazy things were or how disappointing or anything, it didn't matter. Being a mother, I mean, especially when having an infant, um, now it's much more complex. Um, <laughs> it, it gave me an existential purpose. So no matter what was happening, um, it, there, it was, that was a real blessing just to know that, that no matter how confused I might be about my own ambitions or career or life or why I was on the earth, having a little tiny being that's dependent on you um, maybe, maybe it's even the dog too. I guess <laughs> someday I want to get a dog. I've never had one, but that sense of, of responsibility to, 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 a, to some living being that trusts you and loves you unconditionally and, um, and needs you, you can't, it can't survive without you. That, that gives a huge boost to, I think, to any existential dilemma. So uh, not a boost, a whatever affirmation. All right, thank you. Um, I, I haven't had breakfast yet, no coffee. Uh, Happy New Year, Bay. I'm so glad. And we need to get Martini back too, but it's so great to see people again. So she didn't give over, so I give over to Gertrude. Yeah, I didn't I didn't want to go into motherhood <laughs> so much. I just said this was my sweet part this year and in, in, in a double way. Um yeah, so to to find to find love like without connotations. It's just just love. Period. And and that that really, for me, makes a difference. And, and I can feel that also with other people then. So it's, it's not just for those two little individuals, but if I feel it, if I'm being this, then it <laughs> kind of spreads and with people I meet, yeah. So I thank you all for that conversation. It's nice to see you again and to kick off the, the year with you girls and uh, I still have to have a conversation with Christine about Enneagma we wanted to do that last year and there was no way <laughs> so maybe we can get that this year we cannot hear you despite your uh, uh, I'm muted I don't know what has happened how about this? Is this oh, yeah. That's a little yeah. better, yeah. <laughs> so my checkout would be very much just kind of building on what I'm feeling and hearing is that when we are really right here feeling the sweetness, that's love. And then when we stay in a place of love, it really doesn't matter in the moment. Because what if we're coming from love, then that's spreading out. And if it if it's just touching something out there that might make for a softness, a gentleness, a gracefulness, then um there we go. That's I guess that's the greatest gift we could have as a human. Wow, oh, that touches me very much to be able to use those words. I probably didn't say very eloquently, but um, it was my stab at the beauty of what we just did. And I've missed you all. And it's just very sweet <laughs> to be together. And thank you for welcoming that so much. Thank you.
for forgiving me for not being here. Hope I can keep this up. Yes, I do. All the best for you. Thank you. Whatever uh, that might be. <laughs> yeah, as you didn't give over, I give over to Beatrice. Well, it's so fun to be in the, the full room again with everybody. Um, it's been a long time and I hope we can be together again as a full group going forward. Thank you for always including me. And <laughs> <laughs> although I don't know that I represent the younger generation, <laughs> it's totality. <laughs> um, yeah. Happy new year, everybody. Here's let's hoping that this year is, I don't know, whatever, whatever it is that you want it to be. I want it to be calmer. Um, and yeah, so I'm glad to be here and I will pass to Heidi. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I'm I'm happy also when one after the other popped up into the room because I didn't write a reminder. I thought, oh, hopefully they will remember. And, you know, so I'm really glad. I love these conversations so rich and also the meandering, no, where we go from where we start and where we end up. It's always very inspiring to me. And I hope we will have another good year together. Yeah, and thanks again. And Hanali, I think you are still. Thank you, everyone. I'm glad I'm in the position that you can, that I connect with you, that we, I'm out of the space of not having power, <laughs> at least in a much less complicated way. And all I want to share my checkout is, it's great to feel you all again. My body is really loving this. And I can feel, when you were all sharing, doesn't matter what you shared, there was this fluttering here in my lower neck and on the top of my, my, my I could say my, my um, higher heart, this fluttering. So thank you for that, because I love that feeling when I'm with you all. It's not always happening when I'm with everybody online, and this is really special. Thank you for that. And I hope that fluttering takes us into the year in, in a way that we feel we fly, that we fry. Thank you. See you in two weeks. Bye-bye. <laughs>